What is up guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred, and welcome back to another Pokemon News Daily, a daily news show where I go over news spamming across all the Pokemon games, from Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, to Pokemon Quest, to Pokemon Duel, Pokemon Go, and of course, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games. Today is jam-packed with news, so I'm not going to take too long with this, but yesterday's episode kind of got lost in the shuffle. I had a little emergency. If you follow me on Twitter or on Instagram, you would know of that, and I'm sorry I kind of missed everything, so I'm kind of jam-packed everything that happened yesterday and with today, and oh my god, we have a lot to go over. So without further ado, let's get started. So I'm going to start off today's news with the game that we know the least about, and that is the 2019 Gen 8 Pokemon games. Now, yes, I'm going to call it the Gen 8 Pokemon games. Technically, it was not specified if it would be Gen 8, but let's jump into the news so we could kind of see what's going on. So I'm getting this news from a couple of different publications. Obviously, Cerebi.net has the scoop on this, so let's jump over to Cerebi and see exactly what's going on. It says, speaking to Japanese publication, Femisuda, which I'm probably saying wrong, which is a magazine, a Japanese magazine, which has a massive 20 page feature on Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and Pokemon Quest features an interview with the Pokemon company CEO. And I'm not gonna say his name, but I'm gonna have an image of him on screen to kind of make up for it. Who provided minor tidbits about the upcoming Pokemon games for the Nintendo Switch dude out in 2019. Now, Cerebi does want to highlight that he reconfirmed that this game game is due out or these duo of games is due out for the release in the second half of 2019. It will have better graphics than any prior Pokemon game in the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee will be out. So I think that includes the Let's Go games, but I wonder if that includes Pokemon Tournament. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Pokemon Tournament. I would love to see a true RPG in that art style just without the battles. I'm not a huge fan of the way Pokemon Tournament that plays like as a battler. Like it's not even a good Tekken clone, but that's a topic to save for another video. But I wonder if he was referring to that game in this loop because that would be amazing if it does look better than Pokemon. But I'm pretty sure it is gonna look better if it does look better than Let's Go games because Let's Go games do look great in my opinion. He also highlighted that it will be completely new and aimed at experienced fans, not like the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games. And states that it will contain many brand new Pokemon. Pokemon. That's why I'm calling it a Gen 8 game, because if it has a new Pokemon, these Pokemon are not included in Gen 7, that would make this 2019 game a Gen 8 game. If it's going to be styling a new graphic art style that's probably better than Token or, you know, up to that quality, I would love it. Again, is them creating new creatures with new art styles is going to look incredible because this is brand new designs. It's not designs that they've been working on for years. Yes, Pikachu is going to look amazing in this game but who cares about what Pikachu looks like I want to see what the new Pokemon they're going to be drawing up for this generation or for these games another article I want to pull up for you guys is a Newsweek article that also kind of referenced the same interview but highlights different things one thing this article highlights is that the CEO admits that the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games is target for a newer younger audience and branching off of that statement I could clearly say that's 100% true, 100% right. It wants the people who play Pokemon Go, the kids who play Pokemon Go, to get their parents to buy a Nintendo Switch to buy these Let's Go games. It makes perfect sense. And maybe a year later, dive in to the new Gen 8 Pokemon games that are going to have the deep mechanics. You don't wake up in the morning and give the child a steak. You give them cereal first for breakfast, which is the most important meal of the day. And then later on in the day, you have that big steak for dinner and I think that's what they're going for that was a whack analogy I know but it kind of makes sense if you think about it they want to get these people in the door who have played Pokemon Go or haven't played Pokemon at all and want a easier experience a experience they can sell to them because it's so easy and enjoyable and you could share with others and you could do this you could do that you could walk your Pokemon out to the mall if you and then sell them on the true Pokemon RPG after their experience 
experience a more friendly one. This write-up from Newsweek also highlights the new Pokemon again. I don't want to deep dive into that again. It's new Pokemon. That's why I'm calling it Gen 8. They call it Gen 8. A new region. The same thing. Also confirming that the gift Pokemon that we're going to receive that was teased at the end of the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee trailer is most likely one of these Gen 8 Pokemon. Another reason why I wanted to bring up this Newsweek article because they highlight this. It says the Pokemon director, again him, spoke about the prospect of an open world Pokemon game in a Q&A with a European press after the announcement of the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee games. In his words, I quote, with the Pokemon games, I'm sure you all know we are always trying to make them fun and appealing for all players of all ages. Not just older players and not just kids, Masuda says. So I can't really comment either way. If we find a way, I think it's possible if it were to find a way to preserve the fun and the appeal that Pokemon does and also have that kind of more open gameplay, then that is one possibility. It's hard to say right now. I think he's saying it's hard to say right now because that's not what they're shooting for. Not to say if they if that was what they're shooting for, they would come out and just say it. I don't think they want Pokemon to be an open world RPG like how we envisioned it in our head, kind of like Breath of the Wild. I think we're far away from that. I think what they like is the hand holding experience for kids, for younger players. Yes, it is kind of tedious for us older players who know how to catch Pokemon in the wild and stuff like that and don't need that tutorial stage. I think what they need to do is have that as an option. Have the tutorial area as a tutorial area that is totally skippable if you don't want to be told how to play the game. And I think they need to make that more flexible. And I think that's what he's kind of hinting to because he does say that it, it, it needs to be fun and appealing for for all ages, not just older players and not just kids. So I think that's going to be a lesson that they learn from these Sun and Moon games because that was the biggest critique everyone kept saying how handholdy this story and whole game was. Yes, the story was cool, was great. It was kind of weird playing the story twice through Ultra Sun and the original versions of the game, but both versions of the game were so handholdy, aimed for kids. And mind you, it is a kids game. I do understand that but they need an option to break away from that and I think that's what they hit in that here I don't think that we're gonna see an open world Pokemon game but again he does say it, it is a possibility that's on the table they of course they're thinking about how to make Pokemon better that's one of the ways they can but again it's a possibility also while we're talking about Pokemon let's go Pikachu let's go Eevee interesting news came out today the Pokemon has reconfirmed that the motion controls used to catch Pokemon in the game cannot be turned turned off meaning you're gonna have to always use motion control when you want to catch a Pokemon. Whether you have the Nintendo Switch docked or in tabletop mode, you're gonna have to use one Joy-Con through the throwing motion to capture that Pokemon. And if you are playing in handheld mode, you have to move the Switch around to aim and then press A to actually throw the Pokeball. So there's two ways I feel about this. One, I'm gonna play in handheld mode anyway, so I'm not too worried about aiming with the Nintendo Switch itself. I love the gyroscope aiming inside of Breath of the Wild. I think it's perfect for that kind of precision aiming when you're, you know, want to aim at something real quick with your bow and make the shots. I hate it in Splatoon. I turned it off in Splatoon. I actually sold Splatoon because it's a bad game. But I think that the Pokemon company, they know what they're doing. Yes, is this kind of a gimmick to go with the Pokeball functionality. They want you to buy the, you know, Pokeball Plus so it can feel more comfortable feel more organic when you're playing it yeah are they doing it to entice the Pokemon Go fan base that bring them over to the game and buy a Nintendo Switch yeah but I don't think this is something to scream home about one we're getting the true RPG games next year and do I think this functionality is gonna come over yeah and no because I think we are gonna be able to battle Pokemon in a while do I think they're doing this to get you to buy the Pokeball Plus so it can feel more organic when you're using the motion control and throwing the Pokeball at the Pokemon? Yeah, because nobody wants to throw a Pokeball with a Joy-Con. Be honest. You want the feel of the ball while you throw 
throwing it in hell if it's in handheld mode i think it's going to be fine for normal players who are used to the 3ds to again just look at a pokemon in the direction and press a i don't think it's something to scream home about that the the mo no motion controls means the end all be all for these let's go games again the 2019 games are a year away so we are going to be able to have that true rpg core style pokemon game do i think this feature may move on to those games yeah but i do think they know what they're doing this is towards the casual audience the true rpg games are towards the hardcore audience the hardcore audience are used to catching pokemon by just pressing a with a quick ball i think that option is going to live on in those games and this motion control option might make its way over but it might be an option in those games now the next news story is for pokemon go we got the brand new water festival event for 2018 we've seen this water event happen last year that's the event that we first got introduced to shiny magic card now this event we're being introduced into shiny shelter and with shiny shelter comes its evolutionary form which i am in love with the shiny cloy Story because it's like this blue and it the he looks more like Ghastly, but if Ghastly was alive, and I love Ghastly, so I love Shelter because it just I don't know, it just reminds me of like a distant cousin or something. Now, this is coming from the Pokemon Go Live.com, the Niantic official blog post website. It says, Trainers, it's time to make a splash. Our water festival returns June 7th with water Pokemon such as Magikarp and Walmart appearing more frequently in the wild. Now do note Magikarp and Wilmer are both shiny in the game so you can be able to catch shiny Magikarp and shiny Wilmer throughout this event especially if they are appearing more in the wild I think that's pretty cool it says some lucky trainers may even encounter a rare shiny shelter what I brought up shiny shelter to me is the highlight of this event is brand new to the game so I think a lot of people are going to be hunting that good luck for your shiny Pokemon Go hunters out there it says for the first time during the event plus enjoy fill research tasks highlighting water type pokemon until june 21st it says alongside the increased spawn of water pokemon appearing all over the world you'll be able to earn 3x stardust for catching water type pokemon plus 2km eggs will hatch exciting pokemon such as totodile mudkip and chlorfish earn double candy and stardust for for every egg hatch and i think that's pretty cool because again you're gonna be wanting to walk these two K eggs, especially if you want Totodile, Mudkip, and Corefish. I still need to evolve my Mudkip in my Totodile, so I need those Pokemon, so hopefully I do bang a couple of those out. So it's pretty cool that we are going to be earning double candies for those hatches and Stardust for every time we hatch one of those eggs, which is pretty cool. It says raid battles will also feature powerful water-type Pokemon for the duration of the celebration, including the exciting return of legendary Pokemon Kyogre and if you challenge Kyogre during the event and it come out victorious, there's a chance you can encounter its shiny form. This is so trainers dive into this water focused event before it ends on June 21st, the Pokemon Go team. Now, yes, Shiny Kyogre is the first time Shiny Kyogre is appearing in the Pokemon Go game. So again, if you are a Shiny hunter, I would say go out and good luck to you and hunt a Shiny. As far as me, I, I, I wait till Kyogre pops up in the research box. Fingers crossed that it's Shiny when it gets to it because I probably won't be able to get Shiny Kyogre. <laughs> but I think this is pretty cool that they are giving people who missed out on the opportunity to catch Kyogre the first time to catch it again in raids now again and at the same time if you already caught shiny Kyogre now you have an extra mission by trying to get its shiny form I personally don't like its shiny form anyways like this big pink purple I don't know what the fuck it is let me know in the comment section below but I think it's pretty cool that they added shiny legendaries to the Pokemon game also in the news talking about the ultra Sun and ultra moon games the registration for the 2018 international challenge of June has opened up so now you can sign up for the last online competition to award championship points towards your 2018 Pokemon World Championship in the international challenge of June online competition the tournament goes from 
from Friday, June 15th, so mark that on your calendars, until Sunday, June 17th, 2018. Trainers will be limited to 15 battles per day. They're going to be split up through junior and senior divisions, and the top players in each age division will receive championship points, which contribute towards your chances of earning an invitation to the Pokemon World Championship. Players must be opt-in to the Play Pokemon program and have a player ID at the time the competition begins to be eligible for championship points. All qualifying competitors will also earn 50 battle points. It says you will need a Pokemon Trainer Club account. After you log in, you will be able to read and accept the regulations on the Pokemon Global link. You will also need your own copy of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, obviously, and a battle ready team of eligible Pokemon. Accept all the regulations on the PGL by Thursday, June 14th, and get ready to battle. Again, I'm going to have a link in the description so you can register your games to the Pokemon Global link to the Play Pokemon program just in case you do want to get a chance to earn championship points to move on to that Pokemon World Championship. And also, I'm going to have the link to sign up for a Pokemon Trainers Club account if you haven't done so already. That's how you actually participate in these online competitions. Also, in the comment section below, let me know what team you're going to be bringing. I'm going to have a list of eligible Pokemon in the description as well as once I finally have my team, I'll probably do a video on what team I'm going to bring on the International Challenge of June. And yeah, it's going to be a shitty team. I always keep Pikachu on my team because I love Pikachu. I always keep a Charizard on my team because I love Charizard. I'm a noob. I know. But that's who I'm rolling with and that's that, that's what's going to stay on my team to be honest. But let me know what you're going to be taking to this Challenge of June and tips that can maybe help people build a team for this International Challenge of June. Now, Pokemon Duel also got a brand new update. Now, I'm not a huge Pokemon Duel fan. I played it when it launched in America and literally after, I believe like a month, I hard out of the game. It's just like I, I couldn't get down with it. It didn't feel real Pokemon to me, if that makes any sense. It was a good time waster when I first played it, but it was, to me, falls on the line of Magikarp Jump. Now, people love Magikarp Jump. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it for the, you know, hour or two I played, but again, hard to lead. So, the Pokemon Duel update is a special Gym Cup. Is the still Gym Cup that has begun in Pokemon Duel. It says this Gym Cup increases the movement of still type figures and increases the white and gold attacks of fur type Pokemon by 20. It says with this, you can get the special shiny ho figure. It runs into May 28th, 2018. Now, if you are interested in earning championship points in the Pokemon Championship, the Pokemon has also announced the dates for regional championships for the 2018-2019 season to earn a place in the 2019 World Championship. I'm not going to list off the dates in the places these events are going to be happening. I'm going to have all of that linked into the description to the survey page so you can check it out. I'm going to have it on screen and have it in the description of this video as well. Now that's going to be it guys for today with the Pokemon news and let me know your thoughts on everything that we went over today. Are you upset about the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu games and Let's Go Eevee game not an option to turn off motion controls? Is, is that making you not like the game already? Do you think the next year Pokemon games will be a Gen 8 game and let me know your thoughts about the brand new water festival and the new shiny Pokemon coming to Pokemon Go. Also let me know if you're going to register for the 2018 challenge of June and what team you're going to be taking in. And just a heads up guys just in case I'm not able to do a video tomorrow. Tomorrow is my wife's birthday so I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a video tomorrow to be honest and again that probably wouldn't be too smart for me to do it. Especially with E3 stuff, I do have to plan a couple of stuff that I'm doing, especially for E3. When I say plan, I mean I need to arrange my sleep schedule because I'm going to be up all night editing videos. So I need to make sure I do get some sleep in as well. But I'm still going to be banging out these Pokemon news daily videos. Again, daily for you guys because I enjoy doing them and I enjoy making them as well. So let me know your thoughts about Pokemon news daily and how it can improve the show in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm 
Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter. You guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube. And yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of these Pokemon news update videos. The best way to catch them all is with a subscription. So please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace. I'm going to see you guys on the next Pokemon News Daily.